Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first three problems from the latest code forces round 793. So let's start. Okay, so the first problem is palindromic indices. So you're given a palindromic string. Always focus on the like the highlighted words because it seems very important. That's why it is highlighted. So you're given a palindromic string S of length N and you have to count out a number of indexes I such that the string after moving out the s of i will still remain a palindrome so you can just see that given the example that if you remain so if you have a string a b c a b a if you remove a b a is not a palindrome if you remove b a b is a palindrome if you remove like last a it is not a palindrome so the answer is one so you are given some string you have to just tell that after removing every character like how many strings among all of them are palindrome after removing every character that is over problem now in these problems let us see the example and also because they're to a palindrome either like it is even length or odd length okay so you can take examples of both of them also there can be case in which all of them are same okay so in that case i can directly see that if all of them are same you can remove any one of them and it will still remain a palindrome but what what about the even cases and odd cases so think about these situations it will become pretty clear to you so let us move this out let us take an example so let us take an even length string so let us take it to be a a okay then b b then or let's say it is like this a a a b b c c so because it is given that it is initially parent row now what you can directly see is that you have to remove every character one by one if you remove this c it will not be palindrome because this will not be matching out with this you cannot remove out this b okay but you can remove out this a if you remove out this a what you can see is that the string will become like this c b then one two three a's one two three a's and b c but this is still a palindrome now if you remove out this also the case is same because this element is same as this element and like it is similar so you're getting somewhat a point there removing out any four of these characters is same okay like if you remove any four of these characters that are somewhat in the middle of the palindrome you are having then it is good to remove out these characters it will still form a palindrome now let us talk about the e like this is an even case let us talk about the odd case as well which is let's which is that same also if you take out one more a in middle of this so let us like five a's one two three four five then b c like this and b c like this now you can remove out any, all of these five A's and it will still remain the same. So it boils down to how many same characters are there in the middle of the palindrome. Now how you can check out what is the middle or like or you can tell that. So you, what you can actually do is that whatever palindrome you have, you just go to the middle of that element. So let's say if it is odd length, so you can directly go to this middle element. Now you just have to check that how many characters are there that are same or like equal to this middle element on the left and on the right so you can just check on the left till how many characters are same on this middle element so these all are the same and also on the right so you can just find out a window like from the middle element on the left and right side that will form an actual window which are of the same characters because if you remove any of the actors on the middle then eventually like all the elements will stack up and like it will still form a palindrome. I hope you get the point. So that is our logic here nothing much complicated you just you will got it very intuitively if you just draw out one or two cases. So. If I show you the code part of it, and all the code part will be in the description of this video, so stay tuned. Uh, so it, what you can directly do here is, so you can just take the string input, total equal to one, which means that I've taken the middle element, obviously, because if you're matching the from the left and right, I'm not taking the middle element, so you have to take that also. And you just start from middle, go to the right. If the right element exists, you just match that whether the i and i plus are same which means that checking out whether they are continuously forming a window if the same total increment by one similarly on the right hand side on the left hand side so you can just check out from the middle go to the left and right whatever is the window that is forming you those elements you can remove out increment the total and just print out the answer pretty simple cool let us move down to the next problem the next problem is that you the problem statement is like and sorting so you are given a permutation p of integers from 0 till n minus 1 so all the numbers are given to you now see again highlighted word the permutation is not sorted so stay focused on that so it is not sorted so you're given some numbers from 0 to n minus 1 which means if they are distinct their permutation of all the numbers from 0 to n minus 1 they're not sorted you have to make them sorted now permutation is called x sortable so if it is called x sortable when you can do a finite number of operation of this type 
and uh, what is that operation you can swap two indexes i and j such that the values the and values of both of these values equal to x if the and values of both of these values equal to x you can swap these two values out and by doing this finite number of times you can just find out what is the value of x so you just have to find out maximum value of x that is x sortable so x sortable is that you can you can pick some value x like say any value and you can choose out all the values like you can take out two values whose and is equal to x and you can like swap them and you can do this when any numbers such that their and is equal to x you can swap them out and you just have to make them like uh you can just have to make it uh sorted in the end you just have to tell that uh like what is the maximum x that you want okay and there's always exist exist answer i'll tell you why there's always exist answer you just have to print the values x and for such type of confusing so it's a simple problem though but for for such type of like not understandable problems try to see over the examples it becomes very easy if you see the example so you can at least see here is that if this is the like the array that is given to you now if you want to make it sorted there are two x's that can have the value which we can take x sortable which can make this array sorted so x equal to 0 and x equal to 2 both are valid they have given the examples if you take x equal to 0 now what x equal to 0 means that if you take out two numbers their and should be equal to 0 okay so this is the starting array they have swapped 1 and 4 1 1 4 so 0 is swapped so 0 obviously if you take and with any number then it obviously is x uh, and is equal to 0 so that is why you have taken so as you can see that if i take this and this value the and is equal to 0 that is why it is x equal to 0 you have taken so uh you have swapped this out then you can swap 3 and 4 so this is also swapped then again 1 and 3 so in the end it is swapped like swap and uh, you can if x equal to is also valid because uh you can only so these are at the correct position 0 and 1 you just have to swap 2 and 3 if you swap 2 and 3 then obviously the and is equal to 2 so if you take an x equal to 2 and you just swap these two values out this is much larger x because you want to maximize the value of x and that's the whole answer now what i think over in such type problems is that see some of the values are correct in their positions i don't want to change out those orders i just want to change out the values which are not in the correct position so you have to first find out what all positions are the correct positions and what are, are not at the correct positions now all the numbers which are not at the correct positions those like numbers you can you can only swap those numbers out okay so let's take let's take an example so let's take uh, the numbers that is uh, 0 1 these are sorted let's say this is 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 now what you can actually see is that all these numbers are not sorted so the original sorted form should be like this 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 now you can see that 3 is also sorted this is not sorted this is not sorted and this is also sorted so only these two numbers are not sorted I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say. So you can just take an X, which is just equivalent to there such that you can just swap out these two values. I hope you get the point. So what you can directly do is let's say that there is even more numbers that are not arranged. So let's take this example. That is if this is like this five, four, three. Now, if you just sort it out as zero, one, two, three, Four, five. Now this is not sorted. This is not sorted. This is not sorted. This is not sorted. Now I want to like move around these pairs. So I want to make an X, which is somewhat the largest and I can like shuffle around, shuffle around any one of these X's. So what I can just make is that I can make a vector of finding out all the values that are invalid that are not at the correct positions and then just do an and of all the values because which means that i am doing an and of all the pairs if i'm doing all the values of all the pairs which means that that x is valid for all the pairs if i can take any pair i hope you get the point so what you can directly do is that you can find out all the values that are not at the correct position so those values i need to swap to the correct positions okay so these values i need to swap but i do not know the order for, like i i can make this change and like this change so they get multiple changes but if i find out a x that is valid for any pair which I form among all of these numbers then it is good because then I can do whatever change I want between these numbers only and I want to like somewhat swap them out and bring out to their collect position so what I can actually do is that I can find out the end of all the values that are not at the correct positions 
and then that and value can be equal to x and because that x can be used as a pairwise between all of these values then I can just print out that x. That's the overall logic here. So you can just play around, you can just e easily get out when you solve more problems out and you can understand uh, seeing intuitions around here and there. So what I had done here is that I have taken two copies, the first one, the original one and the second one. You just sort out the second one so that you have a copy and the original one. Then you find out the difference, like the disputes one that are not in the same position. So if they're not at the correct position, you just like store out uh, what you can say the ones that are not at the correct positions. Now you have to do an and of all of those values out. So you can just do an and of all those values out as you can see, just print out the answer, that is the actual answer. That is the second problem. The third problem. The third problem is, it's also not that much difficult though it seems, but yeah. So it is LIS or reverse LIS. So you're given an array A of N positive integers. Now, now let LIS denotes the longest strictly increasing subsequence. So uh, you know that longest increasing subsequence, that is a problem, very uh, good problem. So longest increasing subsequence is fine, but it is given strictly. So you have to also ensure that. Now you can see that the longest increasing subsequence of this is uh, one and three, though you can take a subsequence that it should be like longest and increasing. So that is fine, like three, five, 10, 20, so it's length four and so on. So now this is length A, so LIS of A. Now we define an array A dash such that it is the reverse of A. Okay. Now the beauty of an array A is the minimum of LIS of A and the LIS of reverse of A. Now you want, you want to like somewhat shuffle out the numbers in the array you have A. You can shuffle out the array such that after rearranging, you have to maximize the beauty. The maximize of beauty I mean is that you have to find out the minimum value of the LIS of A and the LIS of A dash after the new permutated or, or the new rearranged array you got. Now in this problem, you'll see one thing. What you're trying to achieve here is that the longest subsequence starting from the very start and the very end. Now you want to minimize that difference. So you want to make both of these length as close as possible. Because if you let make the, uh, like the whole, uh, let's say the whole uh, array as an increasing, then obviously the, from, from left to right, it is a longest increasing subsequence. But when you go from right to left, it will be not there because we also want the longest increasing, but it will be decreasing from right to left. So it means that it should be some, some sort of a, like a, like a pyramid or a mountain, which means that it is, should be like going from left to right. It is like increasing and right to left, it should be increasing and the length should be as close as possible. Like the length of increasing from left to right and the right from left, it should be like as close as possible so that it is longest increasing and decreasing. Okay. So the next point is that it is strictly increasing. So let's say, uh, whatever numbers we have. So let's say I have in the array one. So I can, let's say place one at the very start. I have one more one. I can place one more one at the very end because I want such that it should be increasing from the very first and from the very last. So that longest increasing from the front and back. Now, if you have one more one in the array you have, because you have an array now, you want to arrange out all the numbers on the array. So if you have like one, 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 two, two. Okay. Now you can place the first one, one, the second one in the last because that's increasing, but the third one placing inside the array is useless. Why? Because it is strictly increasing. Even if I put one here, it will not be counted because uh, I want it to be strictly increasing and that number is worthless. Like, because, uh, I hope you get the point because I want to find out a sub array, like subset, uh, not subset, sorry, sub, sub sequence, which should be increasing and of the maximum length as possible. Okay. So this, so any number that is same and that is occurring more than twice is worthless to us. So I should not count it out as much. Now again, I see two, so I can put one, two here and one, two here. So it's just that I am just putting one number at the very side, one number at the very end, one number at the very side, one number at the end. If they are like occurring, like, uh, in the increasing, decreasing manner. So if they're only occurring once, then obviously it is like better to put it in the middle only, which are what I mean is that it is one, two. Now if three occurs only once, so I will put like this. So three, two, one. So it is like increasing to this point, increasing to this point, And that is fine. I hope you get the point. So it, it is longer increasing from left to right. One, two, three. In case of right to left, one, two, three. So pretty cool. If it is like three is occurring two times, so I can put three like this. But if it's occurring more than two times, then it is worthless to put because I cannot take that. I hope you get the point. So I can just keep on adding elements like this. And in the end, you just know the length, like how many elements you have put out. And yep, that's the overall answer. So you just have to print out the minimum value. So minimum value is 
this length only this length okay so that's the overall logic here so i can show the code part now so what i've done here is that i have taken the that the answer is to be the total complete end because like all the elements can be used in making the longest increasing subsequence now i had a map to see that how many elements are occurring more than twice so i'll take out every element keep on iterating over that uh, store them inside a map if the occurrence is more than two then i'll subtract my answer why because the total number because that number will not be included in a subsequence eventually so i will decrease my answer by like that much so which means that i will not include that answer in the subsequence that i'm building else i will put that in the answer in the subsequence and i do not know at which order or at which position i'll be putting out but i'm just okay that if it is less than two i will eventually put that into the subsequence i hope you get the point so if it is like one one two i will put the first one in the basket second one in the basket third one i cannot put because it is worthless second two in the basket third two in the basket so i have a basket of four elements but after having all the elements in the basket i have the total length that is this n if i if i cannot take it i'll subtract it from the basket i hope you get the point now i have the total length now i just want somewhat that what is the length i just have to divide it by two because it is from left to right right to left they should be same so it is half and half from left to right so it is like answer plus one divided by two okay so y plus one because it like it can be odd length also so you have to take care of that also so answer plus one it's just like dividing into half because like the half length is increasing from left to right and the half is from left to right and right to left longest again subsequence so that is the overall logic for the third problem as well Thank you for watching this video till the end. I hope you understand all the things. If you have still more doubts, you can mention on the comment box of this video. I will see you next one. Till then, keep coding and bye.